Right, let's do a review of 3.3 uh, sine and cosine function values, unit you know, 3 of AP pre-calculus. Uh, okay, now here we are given a triangle and we need to find the coordinates of the point Q. So, in other words, you just need to remember that this is sort of like polar coordinates, although we'll, we'll officially cover polar coordinates later. But this is of the same concept that the coordinates of a point will be given by R cosine of theta and r sine of theta where r is obviously the radius which in this case is just 3 and theta is the angle made by the uh, by that terminal ray which is oq in this case and the positive x-axis and counterclockwise then so this is what we are looking for this angle is what we are looking for right so obviously this is in quadrant 3 um, but which angle does it look like? Because, uh, okay, this is definitely in quadrant four because this is 300 degrees, so this doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is also in quadrant four because this will be, uh, you know, replacing pi with 180 and then converting that in degrees will give us 330 degrees, so that's not it. Uh, this will become 210 degrees, which is in quadrant two, and this will become 240 degrees, which is also in quadrant two. But it looks like 210 will be pretty close to, uh, you know, uh, the x-axis, uh, negative x-axis, because this is 110, and a little more will be uh, something like this will be 210, and this will be 225, and this is 240. So I think the best choice should be option B. Okay, likewise, we need to find the coordinates of Q. So for Q, once again, it looks like this one. R is clearly 9, and we are looking for a quadrant 3. 3 pi over 4 is definitely 135 degrees, so that is in quadrant 2. This is 150 degree, this is in quadrant 2 as well. Uh, now this one is 210 degrees, and this one is 225 degrees. Okay. I think 225 makes sense to me because the way I see it, these two are uh, these two are equal uh, arc lengths, right? So this is in the middle. It makes sense that 225 has to be in the middle of the quadrant because this is 180, this is 270. So 225 is right in the middle, which should be option D. And obviously 9 is just 9 because that's just the radius, right? All right. Um, oh, and uh, by the way, on the top of it, they have also given that this is isosceles right triangle. So actually, uh, we just missed that. I just missed that. So this is 45. This is 45. That corroborates our answer even further because 180 plus 45 is 225, which is indeed this one. We may as well, if we see this is an equilateral triangle. So equilateral triangle, we make this angle as 60 because equilateral triangle has all angles 60 degree. So this angle will obviously be 30 degrees so this will be 270 because 270 is the entire angle minus 30 270 minus 30 is 240 degree and that's actually what we chose so yeah that's about it here also this is an equilateral triangle we need to find q so equilateral triangle means this is uh, this is 30 degree right because this is 30 this is 30 so that it becomes 60 and I'm interested in this entire angle. So I think this entire angle will be the complete angle, which is 360 minus this portion, which is 30. So it will be 330 degrees. And 330 can be converted into radians by multiplying with pi over 180. So zero and zero is gone. Uh, three times six is 18. Three times 11 is 33. So we are getting 11 pi over six. That has to be the radian measure which has to be option C because the radius is anyway five. Here it is an isosceles right triangle. So isosceles right triangle means that this has to be uh, a 45, this has to be 45 and this has to be 90 degree. And clearly this line is bisecting the 90 degree. So this is also 45 because this is 90, right? So this is also 45. Uh, we are looking for coordinates of Q, so we are looking for this entire angle. Uh, uh, so clearly it makes sense that if this is 45, this is also 45 degree. So the total angle, will, uh, so this uh, highlighted angle will be the complete angle 360 
minus it is 45 short so minus 45 which is 315 degrees hmm. okay none of this has 315 but they are talking about <clears throat> a negative values as well uh, which basically means that uh, uh, they are looking for an angle that is in clockwise sense so in clockwise sense this angle is negative pi over 4 so the coordinates are going to look like r cos theta and r sine theta because theta is negative pi over 4 right and remember that cos is an even function it eats the negative sign so this cos negative pi over 4 is the same as cos pi over 4 and sine is an odd function it throws the negative sign out so it will be negative 15 sine pi over 4 so this should be option c finally a couple of values over here so we need to find the exact value so this is kind of based on unit circle uh, 3 pi over 2 i mean these all are ending at terminal points so i'll just make a quick unit circle for you uh, this point is 1 comma 0 this point is 0 1 this point is negative 1 0 and this point is 0 negative 1 um, the x coordinate corresponds to the cosine value and the y coordinate corresponds to the sine value okay so sine 3 pi over 2 3 pi over 2 is obviously this one right because this is 0 pi over 2 i'll just write here pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2 and then 2 pi or 0 as well so 3 pi over 2 and sine sine like i said is the y coordinate so this has to be negative 1 uh cos pi over 2 cos pi over 2 is uh, uh clearly uh, zero because that's the x coordinate at pi over 2 uh then cos 0 cos 0 is clearly 1 it's right here sine of minus pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is here and the y coordinate is minus 1 so that's minus 1 cos of 2 pi is basically cos 0 because 0 and 2 pi are same so cos 0 is just 1 sine of pi is here so the y coordinate is just zero in this case sine pi over two here the y coordinate is one at pi over two and three pi is pi two pi and three pi so three pi is once again here which is once again x coordinate which is negative one over here so that's about this question and the last question that we have is again these are pretty standard values i'll tell you how to solve this without using the unit circle let's get these two out of our way because sine 2 pi and cos 2 pi is basically the x coordinate and y coordinate here uh, y co uh, x coordinate is cos so cos 2 pi is 1 and sine 2 pi is 0. other than that uh, let me tell you a strategy uh, you might know this already from your uh, from your earlier classes uh, it is about with in which quadrant uh, uh, it's about knowing the sign of trig functions in various quadrants and we used to remember it like all students take calculus all students take calculus what this means is in quadrant 1 a in quadrant 2 s in quadrant 3 t in quadrant 4 c this means that in quadrant 1 all trig functions are positive it means that if there is an angle that is in quadrant 1 so it doesn't matter which trig function you are taking sine cosine tangent cosecant secant or co cotangent it's going to return a positive number likewise in quadrant 2 if the angle is in quadrant 2 then only sine and cosecant are going to return a positive number because that's you know s in quadrant 3 t t means tan so only tan and cotangent are going to return positive or in quadrant 4 you must have guessed cosine and uh, secant are going to return a positive number if the angle is in quadrant 4 and if we take cos and sec of both uh, of that angle how is this helpful because now you don't have to memorize the entire unit circle just the basic just the values of trig functions uh, at the following angle 0 pi over 6 pi over 4 
pi over 3 and that's about it in fact i can take out zero take out zero as well because zero and other things are just unit circle based so if you remember the sine cosine and tangent of these angles you can find the value of any angle using this method which i'm going to tell you now so just memorize these three angles and then we will use a strategy okay now what is that strategy if the angle is in quadrant one for example then i don't think so there is any reason to worry because it's just that you memorize these values so sine pi over three for example is uh, one over two sine pi over sorry cos pi over three for example is one over two sine pi over six is also one over two but now let's say the angles start getting in the other quadrant like these so what you have to do is just ignore this three for the moment just avoid this three for the moment and the moment you will ignore that number it will convert into quadrant one now sine pi over four is in quadrant one right and the sine pi over four has a value of root two over two so write root two over two here but once again we are looking for three pi over four and three pi over four is in which quadrant it is in quadrant two and in quadrant two sine is positive or negative in quadrant two sine is positive because these are the only positive uh, trick functions so if it is positive so answer is just the same thing likewise for example let's say cos 7 pi over 6 so ignore 7 for the moment cos pi over 6 what is cos pi over 6 root 3 over 2 okay but 7 pi over 6 is in which quadrant it is in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 3, only tan and cot are positive, others are negative. And we are taking cos, so it has to be a negative value of the same thing. That's our answer. Likewise here, ignore this 2. Pi over 3, what is sine pi over 3? Root 3 over 2. But 2 pi over 3 is in which quadrant? It's in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, sine is positive. So my answer is just the positive number. Cos, ignore this. Cos versus cos pi over 4, root 2 over 2. But 5 pi over 4 is in which quadrant? Quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, sine is, uh, sorry, uh, cos is definitely negative because only tan and cot are positive. So this is negative. Cos 5 pi over 6, let's ignore this. Cos pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And what is 5 pi over 6? What is the quadrant of 5 pi over 6? That's quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, only sine and cosecant are positive. Cos is definitely negative. So this will be a negative number. 11 pi over 6. Ignore 11. Pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. 11 pi over 6 is in quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, indeed, cos is positive. So my answer will be just the positive number. Ignore this. Sine pi over 4, root 2 over 2 sine 7 pi over 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4 in quadrant 4 sine is negative because in quadrant 4 only cos and secant are positive so that's not correct and finally 7 uh, sine pi over 6 is root uh, sorry sine pi over 6 is 1 over 2 7 pi over 6 is in quadrant 3 in quadrant 3 only tan and cot are positive so this has to be a negative number so negative 1 over 